Okay, we'll get this over there. Okay. <laughs> Rachel is the founder and president of RC Associates LLC, which provides retained recruiting services to growing engineering companies nationwide. Rachel finds engineers for companies. Hey, if you're an engineer, you'd like to be found by somebody like Rachel, right? Yeah. Rachel serves on the board of directors and the executive board for the McDonald Training Center, a Tampa Bay nonprofit which helps adults with disabilities to live independent lives. Uh, Rachel has won every single award available to young entrepreneurs in Tampa. There's not one, she's not won at some point in time. No, that's it. She's won every award. That's all. Okay, great. Okay, so, you know, you guys may have participated in, in resume stuff before. You know, you can always go out to the store and get a book, right? Hey, how to write a resume and stuff like that. Okay, if that, that's great. They have great information. I would recommend that you do that. That's not what we're going to do tonight. So tonight is a very unique experience, okay? We have two experts in resumes and what it takes to get noticed up here, okay? Your brain is full of questions. Now, you may not know what those questions are yet. So my job tonight is to shake your brain just a little bit and get those questions to come out of you, okay? We're here to answer your questions. Now, I'm gonna get things started. I got a bunch of questions. I'm gonna be asking the ladies my questions. With a little luck, they're actually gonna answer my questions. No promises, but that's what we're gonna be shooting, right? We're gonna do this for a little while. Now, I think like uh, seven or eight of you guys have actually provided me with copies of your resumes. Thank you very much for doing that. We'll do some questions for a little while, then we'll take a break, and what we'll do is we'll take a look at one of those resumes, okay? The ladies have already had a copy of the resumes. You'll be able to see the resume. We're gonna take a look at it, and we're gonna say, hey, what's really good about this resume, and maybe what could be changed? Now, this is probably somebody else's resume. Who cares? I don't care about the resume, but guess what? Your resume probably looks very similar to their resume, right? So keep your eyes open and go, oh wow, I'm doing that. And if they say, hey, you should change that, then you should change your resume. That makes sense? Fine. So we're all on the same page here. So no matter what, I guarantee you, during the time that we spent together tonight, you are going to learn one thing about your resume that you don't know. That sound like a fair, fair objective? One thing? So if you happen to learn two things, that'd be 100% more than you were expected, right? I'm promising two, I'm promising one, okay? All right, let's get this one started. So I got my list of questions. We've got the ladies here. We're all set up to do this. Shall we get it started? Yes. All right. Yes. Question number one, ladies. Karen, this is gonna be for you right off the bat. So what's the goal of having a resume? What do I want the person who's reading my resume to do when they get my precious, precious resume in their hands? Okay. The goal of having a resume is to um, tell us about you and what your qualifications are because you are the only one that knows everything you've done and you have to share that with us because this is your profile. This is the only thing we know about you and it's so, so important to have people review it, make sure it's free of typos and get your best foot forward to get your foot in the door. Because getting your foot in the door is the first step, and then you can take it from there. So, Rachel, anything to add to that one? So, yeah. what's, what's the resume all about? I would agree with all of those ideas, but I always recommend something clear and concise. We don't have to learn your whole life story, but it's enough to entice someone to want to call you. So, sometimes people are just assume, oh, wait, everyone knows what this big, complex thing is. Well, a lot of times, people that are reviewing a resume for their first time might be a liberal arts major or a business major, someone that's not really technical sometimes software programs are reading it for the first time. So make sure you hit the keywords of how you match the job description. You also want to tailor your resume for each job that you apply for. We talked about this a couple years ago when we had a seminar with Jim on resumes. You want to have that master resume that's everything, but that's not who you want to send the first time. You want to send the concise, um, really simplified manner of describing this parent said exactly what you are. Yeah, so uh, Rachel brought up a really interesting point. So once upon a time I was working for Verizon, my job went away. Verizon has actually a pretty cool program where they say you got 30 days to see if you can find another company, another job in the company, otherwise you're hitting the street. So I was very active for those 30 days. What I discovered is that within Verizon you could apply for internal positions. We know about this sort of stuff, right? Well, it turns out that the people inside the company who would be evaluating your application for a position 
were not technical people, right? It was all outsourced, and they were all lovely people, no question about that, but they didn't have a clue as to what these jobs were all about, right? So these were networking jobs, and optical networks, and computer networks, and design of networks, and implementation networks. You know, as Rachel said, these were probably liberal arts majors. They probably majored in, you know, Russian history or something like that when they went to college. And they're probably wonderful, smart people, but they don't know the very first thing about a telecommunication network, and yet they're acting effectively as the front gate. So once I realized that these people didn't have a clue, right, very quickly what I started to do was to copy the job description into my resume. Because effectively what these folks were doing was pattern matching. So here's somebody who's applying for a job. I wonder if they have the capabilities. And they had no ability to you know, go, well, that's very similar. Obviously, they worked in that. No, they had to find the same words in the resume to realize, OK, this person's a good match for this job. Once I realized that, I mean, I got through the front door all the time. But it was, a, it was an important breakthrough to realize that whoever's taking a look at your resume may not wrong way to say it, be a rocket scientist in your particular area. Right? So your resume, as the lady said, is your entry in through the front door. But you've got no idea what the qualifications of the person who's reviewing it is. So you have to sort of do their job for them. Make it very easy for them. All right. And Jim, can I ask? Yes, please. Ask do you want to? Okay. I was just going to say, you know, yeah, you want to copy the job description. You want to make sure everything's accurate. If you don't have those skills, don't put it on your resume. Because then you, you might get in the door, but you're not getting any farther and you're going to hurt your reputation. So just make sure that it's accurate. And I want to add also, um, anytime you see a job posting, look at the um, requirements and look for skills. And even if you have them, don't assume, like I'm not an engineer, don't assume that I would understand what you're saying, because I don't. But a lot of companies now are going to applicant tracking systems. So the system, you submit your resume, it goes, I call it the black hole. So it goes in there and it matches in the system for the job rec number to that. And what these systems do nowadays is they, they rate the resume versus the job. So you can, you know, and then there's a breaking point. So I have like maybe five resumes that are 80 percentile or higher. And there's a big break, you know, a good break there. But if there's a lot of applicants, I don't have time to go through all the resumes. And then what happened before is, for example, I did most of the engineering, but every now and then a coworker, if I was doing something else, might do one. So she's just going to take those top five resumes, not know anything about engineers, and not even look at the bottom ones. So you have to be really careful because these applicant tracking systems are matching keywords and, and rating, giving you a percentage, and you don't even know it. So it's really tough. Yeah, so you know, the ladies just hinted at something that I think is probably worth the entire time that you're going to spend here tonight. There is no such thing as having a resume. So you don't really have a resume. What you have is a template, right? And so every single job that you apply for, you need to customize the template for that job. So as Karen pointed out, it, it goes through an automated word checker. They're looking for specific words. And by the way, you might have some of those words in your resume anyway. But it sure seems like it would behoove you to go through that resume, through that job posting, and pull out the keywords that they have in there and make sure that those keywords appear in your resume. And your template, your standard, this is who I am, this is what I've done, may not have all of those words. So you know, the you know, 15, 20, 30, whatever minutes it takes you to pull those words out and create a custom resume for each job that you're applying for to pay incredible dividends. Do not have a resume that you just submit to everybody. You have to customize that resume okay. for the particular job. And can I add something Please. to you? It's interesting. So something else to think about is, okay, you spent all this time on your resume. There's an opportunity to submit a cover letter too. Take that opportunity and do that. And you'd be surprised how many times there's an opportunity to do that and people don't. One of my clients just hired me on a project to go through, it's like 100 resumes, we had to narrow it down to the best and 
every screen in the book. And to be honest, the people that really caught my eye were the ones that didn't submit through the job board, were the ones that emailed it to me directly, or maybe even if they did submit it, they had like a personalized cover letter to showing their passion and enthusiasm and how they're really excited about this job and this is why. And you'd be surprised out of like the 100, maybe like 10 people actually did that. And those, though I guarantee you, nine out of 10 of those individuals, we, were, we made sure it called them because they stood out. And it, sometimes too, the cover letters are just the standard cover letter and it doesn't even apply to your job. And those don't stand out. But when someone takes the time to be like, this is why I'm perfect for the job, and tells me about it, that's taking it a step further. So don't just spend all this time on your resume and forget about the cover letter. You know, you're halfway there with the resume. Make sure the cover letter is there too. I think that's really important. People just, I don't know if they're just spent all this time and they're like, oh yeah, I'm done. And then, you know, send it. Exactly. But exactly. it's worth it. Excellent. I think that's great. Yeah, so basically, potentially the cover letter will get the person to read your resume. I think so. If you remember, I found a few cover letters working for Tampa Electric Company. Oh, I'd really like to work for Progress Energy. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. I bet you would. Yeah, you know, just, just put that one to the side. Seriously, I had quite a few like that. They just, you know, they had it. They were applying for different jobs, and they just submitted. Attention to detail is huge, especially amongst engineers. That's just a huge dimension. Oops. Yes. The spell checker can get that. Regarding cover letters, how do you feel about the T format style? have a table and it lists the desired qualifications that you list towards next to it. I only recently discovered uh, found I discovered this yesterday and it, it seems like it's fitting for people who you said are non engineers that really don't know. I've never seen that. I'm, I'm not, no, I've never seen that. Sounds like it's very new. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, well, I've never heard that there, one. There's, there's a lot of stuff out there for like business and stuff that doesn't necessarily apply to our but you know what I've seen is people put that in their resumes. I've seen stuff like that before. But I don't know, I feel like we want to show you the right paragraph and sentence. Ah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Communication skills as the huge. So the interesting thing about a cover letter, of course, is that it gives you, you know, obviously in your form, in your resume, you're fairly limited. You know, very specific, you got a little bit of space and like that. The cover letter just sort of opens the door a little bit, right? You've got a little bit more room to express and you can talk about different things. If you do the, as you said, the T format or sort of the table thing, you're losing that opportunity perhaps to expound on some stuff that you think. It's not as personal. Yeah. But I can understand it from an engineering point of view. Love it, right? Yeah. <laughs> look, look at all these bullet points. I must be the right person. Well, well that's like two pages. The argument for what I, when I was reading on it was it's good for, I said, the HR people who don't know because yes. it's a very laid out method of why you're a candidate. They really said it's not necessarily good for the higher. Vice President gig? Well, I mean, we're going to get past the HR. I understand. Say, uh, the engineer for the charge of the, the department I got that it. is not the text space. So it can get you in the door, but it might not get you fucking. You don't just want to substitute your cover letter later on. Yeah. Right. Right. I have this one for the guy in yeah, charge of the HR. <laughs> if you are the first person, use this cover letter. If you are the second one, then use this. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's a great question. All right. We'll now move on to my question number two. <laughs> Rachel, this one's for you. So now I've heard that a resume has to grab the attention of the person who's reading it within the first 35 to 40 seconds, otherwise they're not going to read any farther. Do you have any thoughts on how I might go about doing this, outside of using a whole bunch of curse words? Yeah, you know, and I'm going to preface that for a minute. Actually, people probably spend less than 35 seconds. That's a really long time. Okay. To be honest, someone's going to look at a resume, they're going to be like, okay, electrical engineer, PE, you have good job history, okay, next. And literally, that's all someone's going to do. Because they have a stack of 100, right? Okay, so yeah. it's just, okay, if you're lucky, okay. that's all you have. I mean, but it's true. You put them in piles. Okay. Yeah, you do put it in piles. And you're looking at it for two seconds, you're going to be like, yes, no, maybe, or one, two, three, whatever you're supposed to rank them. <laughs> Clients have like scoring systems, there's applicant tracking systems that are doing it. I want to see something clear and concise that shows me the basic information. What do you do? Are you licensed? What's your job history? What projects have you worked on? That's it. Could I mean, you say that again? I'm sorry. A little oh, sorry. sorry. Um, your degree, any licensure that you have, your job history, um, and projects. So specifics about you. Because I'd be really surprised sometimes. You know, I'd get bogged down in a resume because I'd look at it and I was like, I have no clue what this person does. And that happens all too often. You read through the resume and. You even after reading it, you have to spend more than your five seconds on it, and you still don't know. Um, because there's no projects. People, I think, are trying to be 
bag on purpose because they want to get any job, but I want them to be qualified for my job. And if I don't know that, sometimes I don't have time to call them to get that information. So. Karen, any thoughts on what it takes um, to grab attention? Basically, the same thing. If I have to spend too much time on it, I'm just going to go put it in the maybe pile. Because I would always would go through them have yes, definite, maybes, and no's. And the maybes, usually I would run them by the hiring manager, if I didn't understand some of the technical terms, I would ask the hiring manager, what do you think about this one? Not sure. So, but if you're very concise about what the job posting says, myself, a non-technical person, I can tell if you have the minimum qualifications for to go on to the next level. So. What consistently makes you say yes? Um, when they have all the qualification, qualifications that are matching, the education, Possibly a PV, um, you know, the years of experience that are in the requirements and um, the skill set that they're looking for. So you would say you target an area of the resume first that appeals to you or what you're looking for in your job, and then if that intrigues you, you'll look at the rest. But until then, you. Yes. you I have to make sure that they meet the minimum requirements. So I work down from the bottom up. I love to make sure they have the education. If they have a, if it's a requirement, say for example for a PE, that has to be there too. But if it's you know preferred, that's a plus. Um, so I make sure they have the qualifications first, and then put them in the yes. This is just my system, <laughs> and and then I go further down. Like say I have 20, oh gosh, I can't do 20 resumes, and then I um, go through them again get the top maybe 10 for the hiring manager to look at and then we narrow it down to maybe five or six because you cannot interview you know more than those but that number of people it's just too many people to interview so you want to pick the top qualified people and i know in my case you know whenever i'm kicking off a new position with our retained clients they tell me exactly what i need to produce green or involvement for a lot of times good job history is one of those or you know maybe they won't want local candidates or a candidate in a certain about sometimes it's things that are outside of your control, you know, that are part of the qualifications. So, um, but that's not, it depends. I mean, there's so many different things that can make it a yes or a no, but having all of those items that you need, the requirements showing that, um, you know, I think that definitely helps as well. So, that, your question was an excellent one. So, I mean, what I heard from Karen, who's not an engineer who was evaluating resumes, she was doing a lot of pattern matching. Right? So the, the job description had a bunch of stuff that said, we're looking for this. You know, she's got, what, 15 seconds with your resume. She's looking at your resume to see whether or not it matches the job description, right? And if she can easily determine, yes, it does, you went into one pile, good pile. And if it, you know, as, as they mentioned, if it was hard or they couldn't figure it out, there's two other piles for it to go into. So, I mean, arguably what that means is before you submit a resume for a job, you stop, you take a look at the job posting, go, well, okay, she's going to be looking at the job posting, and now she's going to be looking at my resume. Can I quickly determine whether or not my resume matches that before I submit it? And if it doesn't, you got some re kabobble to do. That makes sense? I think we had another question. Oh, yeah, you said good work hit history, and I was just wondering, what, what, what do you think is good? Sometimes I see a resume where every six months or a year someone's at a new job, um, and it's been going on pattern for 20 years. With the economy we just went through, there's, you know, there's so many resumes out there where people have gone through a lot of junk recently, and that's okay. Um, people understand that, employers understand that that's not going to preclude me from calling. Um, and the circumstances always happen in people's lives, they have to move, I mean, things like that happen. So I don't care if it's just the last three jobs, it's been, it's been a little pattern. But if you had your job for 15 years and then there's a little bit of a pattern of every other year, and then you've been at a job for five years, I'm okay. But sometimes we see resumes that my clients won't look at because they're all the local job hoppers every single year for 20 years they've been at a different job um, and you might want to consider in those cases doing a functional resume or really networking um, rather than just submitting your resume blind because employers do disqualify those based on those qualifications so. so i will share with you a personal story in that regards so the previous company that i worked for was a startup i worked for them for six <coughs> months then they ran out of the amount of money and that was the end of it now, when I was talking, I had an opportunity to talk with a, with a recruiter at one point in time. And she was actually very nice, and she was very open with me, and she said, oh my god, you only work for them for six months. 
what, what went wrong there? I suppose her up there shut down. She said, uh, you know, for what it's worth, that doesn't look that good. She said, you know what you should do? She said, you should change your title. Change it to, you were a consultant for them. She said, if you do that, then I found a problem with it being six months. Because it was a six month consulting gig, as opposed to necessarily being a full time employee. She says, sure, I, I wouldn't have any problems with it being, it becomes unremarkable. I have a problem with that though, personally, because I feel like they're not being completely honest in your resume. And I, if I found that out in an interview, you'd be gone. You I'm may get an yeah, interview, honest but don't yeah. necessarily do what I do. Sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> not the right person. It's just a different and, way and of And I'm okay, but I'm okay with your resume saying six months. You know, that would be something you explain in a cover letter when you just tell people, if it's only one job, six months, I'm okay with that. You know, it's just, it's not a pattern. You're looking for patterns. Yeah. Gaps. Yeah. But I would never lie. I mean, that's not, it's a little bit of a lie. I, I would, probably wouldn't do that on them. And people sometimes are like, I'll just leave it off a resume. Don't leave it off. It'll come back in a background check when you're about to get the job, yes. and then you'll lose the job yes. because of that. So right. you might get your foot in the door, but you're not going to close it. Damn those computers. <laughs> 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 We've offered jobs, and people have accepted them. We've done the background checks, and they've lied. We rescind the job offer. And even sometimes we've had arguments with the hiring manager. But I want them. I said, but you can't. You said that this was a requirement. They don't have it. We can't hire them. Because you excluded other people from that job. I mean, that is a requirement. How can you hire this person that <coughs> lied about it? And we said, we had a job, but we were fine in the background check. They were. That's well, how do you find that out in the background check that they do? Oh, for example, if they work for a company a certain amount of time or degrees. We found quite a few people that did not have the degrees that they said, because we do check with the institutions, and you know, then the hiring manager, oh, no, I have to go through this again, but I said, it's an integrity issue. If they lie about this, what else are they going to lie about? So we take, hmm. because it's, it's integrity. So, and actually, that, that actually brings up a fascinating question. So, what will your previous employers say about you? Which is an interesting question. Right? You know, you left them under whatever circumstances, maybe you moved on, maybe they told you to move on. The question is, if somebody calls them up, another business calls them up, what will they actually tell you? My understanding, based on historical stuff, is that there's all sorts of, it's a legal quagmire, right? If they say something bad about you, you can turn around and sue them. So I believe that what firms will say is, yes, that person worked for us. We hired them up this day, and they left, they just left, on this day, end of story. Nothing else, I don't think they say what position you had, I don't say whether you got fired or you left or you were riffed or and nothing like that. Well, it's really just three pieces of information is my understanding. Is that what, they can do, what they can do is say, for example, I'm trying to get back and I'm trying to the person, was this employee employed at your company from such and such state to this? They can say yes. Was this their title? Yes. But if it was not their title, they can say no. But they can legally, they cannot say why they left. They cannot get in any information mm -hmm. on that employee. Um, it's and you know, and we would tell hiring managers too. If someone calls you, to send them to HR. Um, do not give out information on previous employees because we can sue. But it's what about references that um, I?
more reputation that I see that hurts people in the long run rather than official references because we're that people cannot say bad things officially, but it's unofficially. So you know, just be professional. Whenever you leave a job, give your couple weeks notice, um, close things out, always be available. You know, have common professional courtesies. Cool. That's a good All right. All right. So Karen, how about this one? So I have been working for 25 years, and I don't want to brag, but I've done an awful lot during that 25 years. Now I feel on my resume, I should tell everybody about everything that I've done during my career. So it brings up the somewhat awkward question of, so how long should a professional engineering resume be? And I'm expecting somewhere in the area of 10 to 12 pages. We just had this discussion <laughs> pre earlier. Yeah. Um, I, I personally do not like long resumes, Rachel does. <laughs> um, it, it just depends. I would not go back 25 years. Oh, yeah. Maybe 10 to 15 years. And if you have relevant information, there's not, nothing wrong with a two to three page resume, as long as it's relevant to the job that you're applying for. Don't list every job you ever had, like during college, right after, you know, like McDonald's, whatever. It's not relevant. And plus, sometimes if, you know, dating yourself and let's face it you know people might um, be prejudiced against your age so you don't want to go back way too far you just want to make it relevant to the job that you're applying for see it's funny though because i, I disagree oh, God. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I think you were talking about this earlier which is funny right. but i think they're both right and this is i think they're both good yeah. it depends what job what type of company because my clients will say to me well i want to know their complete job history so then me as a recruiter when i'm interviewing the person i have to get all that information but I agree, I mean, I'm okay with not putting your dates for education and including all that information. But I think I've seen what people have done and put their job history and have put dates sometimes with it to try to do that. But I feel like if you work for 20 years and you can do your way up as a manager and you can put off the resume, to me, I feel like as long as it's engineering related, you shouldn't be Right, it's that. related. Yeah, but yeah, it's what I'm with McDonald's or internships. Yeah. If you're internships. 20 years of experience. Right. Yeah. You know, if you're, um, you know, if you haven't been out of school that long, obviously, are relevant. Right. Yeah, so I don't know if this is germane or not, but so I've worked for actually a number of different companies, and obviously I'm, I've got a space issue on my resume, right? I'm running out of space. So what I've done is the older jobs, I've sort of reduced to a line item, right? So I worked at them, this was my title, and I worked from there to there. And they just become a line item, so there's not really a description, per se, of what I did 25 years ago, right? You know, the ones that I've worked on in like the last 10 years, there's a bit of a description, you know, different titles and the projects I accomplished and stuff like that. But the stuff a long time ago shrinks the farther away you get from it down to just a simple line item. And hey, if you want to talk about what I did there, we can have a talk for hours. But it's not going to take up that much room on my resume. So I have more room for the more current stuff that I work on. Yeah. Excellent. So we've reached a point in our discussion tonight that I thought maybe we'd have a, a quick look at an actual resume. Now, do we have uh, Audrey in the audience tonight? No. <laughs> Why did you put mine up there? I did it alphabetically by first name. No, that's not. Okay, so we have found our culprit here. So this is uh, Audrey's resume. Now the ladies have a copy of it. I just have just uh, sort of a placeholder up on the screen. So ladies, uh, I guess overall, if you took a quick look at her resume, we have sort of a gut reaction on, on what we think. Is it like, it's okay? It's the it best of ever. I thought it was great. Excellent. I couldn't think of a comment to comment on it. I think it looks excellent. Way to go, Audrey. Will you I drop the ball? Really yes. Yes. I really so have nothing ball. on this paper. No, I mean, I couldn't think of any comments. Yeah, I have no comments. Okay, so, so for the rest of you guys, let me do a little, little scroll action here just so you can sort of see the rest of it. We'll see if the ladies would like to talk a little bit. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. We'll go back up here. So she starts out with summary. She gives a bunch of bullets on why she's the best software engineer in the entire world, which is very cool. Yeah. Talks about her selected accomplishments. Um, instructional. Uh, Audrey, is that what you've taught? Is that what instructional means? Is that teaching? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I see some uh, technical. Is that like jobs? Is that, is that what that would mean? Okay. Uh, certificates. Education. You, Audrey, do you not list any of your employers? So it's an in instructional yeah. technical. That okay, so that's actually yeah. where it's okay, I think it looks great. 
Cool. So like page one is what you accomplished, and page two is sort of like where you did it. I like that it's easy to read. I can look at it in like 15 seconds, and I could know exactly what you do. And it's easy. Like the eye, it doesn't all run together. Like I can easily see the bullet points in there. Okay. Okay. You can see where you So Audrey, congratulations. No, I guess, so that's all the, yay, Audrey, that's really good. Is there anything Audrey could change that you could think of? Is there anything that would make it a little sharper, a little clearer, toner? I like how she's done her heading with her name folded and underlined her email address and all her personal information here. Okay. Really, it's basically just pretty good. All right, so let's go. Cool. So Audrey, we'll be taking a look at other people, so maybe you can, you know, we'll talk about <laughs> Lots a little, a little bit of a failure. Thanks a lot, Audrey. Appreciate that. Boy, is there a question? Well, it says she scanned through there. Was the professor spelled wrong? Uh, oh, yeah. See, 15 seconds, I didn't catch that. What? On page two. Oh, right there. She has an extra S. Yes. This was supposed to be your like quick, bad, whatever. I didn't really expect you to put it on the board. It just kind of leaps out at you. Thank like, you. Wow. <laughs> We're there for you, Audrey. Look at that. Got us. But wait a minute. Okay. Hold on two seconds. This is all, well, actually, the interesting question, Audrey, just when you go back and make that correction, the question is, is there a red squiggly line underneath it? Because once again, you would think that that would be jumping out. So just for whatever reason, it didn't show up. And oh, by the way, if there is a red squiggly line, the question is, are there other red screens? So just something to check out. I mean, it, you know what it might be is that it's underlined. Because if it's okay, underlined, next. you can always <laughs> <laughs> Is that really the best font? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at one more resume here as long as we're stopped. Should we get one question? Oh, yes, please. Um, on our resume, she has two four pages. Yes. So if someone went like one and a half pages, is that something that looks bad? Or? Um, no, it's fine. No. I'm just old. Uh, I think when you go to <laughs> three or four pages, you run into problems. Well, yeah. Can I clarify? The reason why I was telling Karen I like longer resumes is a lot of times engineers also include a project list. So if you're doing something that's project oriented, your resume itself will probably be two or three pages, but some people, sometimes you need to do a specific project. And sometimes you can include that as a supplemental <laughs> document, so it's not included technically as a resume. But for me personally, I like to do all of the information, and then I'll help you tailor it before we send it on to someone like Karen or to the hiring. So it's a little bit different from my perspective. So I just wanted to clarify why I said I like longer resumes personally. So I think for the company, you should follow Karen's advice to, you know, make sure it isn't 20 pages when you send it. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Projects, is it just like bullet explaining the project briefly or whatever? Explain to you what what your role in the project was because it's so important. Like um, behavioral based interviewing, we don't hear about the team, we care about what was your role in the project. So if you coordinated the project, if uh, what was your role in the project? So so we know what your skills are. Can I have a project template if you want to email me? I can send it to you and it includes I can send it to anyone that's interested. It has like a kind of a summary of what you should put. So it's if you want to model it so I have parts of here. If you'd like to email Rachel, her email address is it's going to be Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, then it's going to be at R-C Associates L-L-C, so all one word. So it's going to be R-C-A-S-S-O-C-I-A-T-E-S L-L-C dot com. And you can ask her for her project template. Was there a question? Um, hold on, I'm going to come to you in just one minute. This gentleman here had a question. So, uh, the project, we do the project, how we describe a project, we knew the project people, a previous employer, like project name. Right, uh, the, uh, the uh, blue widget project or whatever the heck it was, right? Yeah, yeah. There's so many ways you can do it, and none of them are for me correct or correct. Some people include their projects with their employers. Some, it depends how long your work history is. Some people um, group the projects together, so they put all one type of projects together, and they group them that to build you up by date. I mean, you might be working on one project for 10 years. In that case, I mean, it depend on how you should lay it out, how you should do it. But I typically, what if it's not a confidential project, but the name, the client, the dates, your title with the project, I mean, I think those things are important to include. But again, everything's different. Sometimes it's confidential. You can't include that. Um, 
Um, so there's a lot of needs depending on what your past experience is. What you should do. Does that answer your question? You know, and actually, uh, just to tie onto what you said, so remember, your resume is being read by somebody who doesn't work for the company that you left, right? Yeah. So however you refer to that project, you want that person to understand what you worked on. So right. So inside the company, there might have been a secret cool code name for that project. But if I don't know, how to, you know, that doesn't mean anything to me if I'm not working for that company. So if you were working on a, you know, 55-inch uh, television display electronic control thing. Call it 55 inch television. You know, maybe inside the company they called it Purple Snowman. But don't 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 say that on your resume, because I got no freaking clue what Purple Snowman is, right? But if it's a 55 inch display controller, call the project that so that if I'm reading your resume, I'm like, oh, you worked on display controllers for television. And then we have a discussion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And something that I think is important when we're talking about before, um, if you actually didn't work on the project, you weren't that role, don't include that on there. Because I thought people not get interviews before because the hiring manager looks at it, they're intimately familiar with that project and they know everyone that was on that team. And they're like, so-and-so wasn't on that team. Why did they include that? Because you know, sometimes you kind of expand a little bit what your skills and your role is. And maybe you, you did one file for it, but you put that you're like a project manager for it. I wouldn't recommend doing that because that could not get you an interview because you'd, you'd be surprised again how small the world it is. You know, everyone knows that and it might not, you might get the first interview, but you might prevent you in the background check for another step later on. So, again, just like the resume, the project list should be accurate to your experiences. Because the hiring manager may have a friend in that company and say, I think this person worked on this project. It's just very small world. Okay. Everyone knows everything. Excellent. The gentleman in the black and in back in green, sir. Yeah. Um, sorry if I missed this question. Uh, I'm kind of a little bit late, but uh, typically in today's economy, a lot of people are changing jobs very rapidly. You don't really stay in the same job for five or ten years. I've noticed a lot of people, sometimes you're a three-month project or a six-month project doing temporary work. Or maybe you work for a company and you gain certain skills doing statement of work and doing a project at a company. At what point would you say would be a good cutoff to say put that on your resume and highlight that skill? Uh, is there a rule of thumb when it comes to the number of employers to list? How far back in your past? So it's basically a two-part question. How far back in your past do you need to go? How many years? And does it matter the time frame that you were at an employer if you feel like you gain skills to add to your resume? At, a, at an employer, let's say that's a temporary three or six month assignment. There's so much contracting, right? Yeah, are right. you talking about contracting? Correct. Basically, okay, so it's a contracting gig. as a portion of List it for what it is. Three months here, six months there, maybe nine months there, what, or whatever, right? Ching, ching, ching. But then also, I think you make a very good point. You say that on each one of those projects that you're on, you're picking up a particular skill or set of skills, right? Right. Then, you know, highlight that. And probably right. Being able to write a statement of work is not very easy to do. And when you pick you that up from an employer right. on a project, I believe that would be something. So perhaps I can assist you with that. Perhaps in the title that you held for that company, put the word contract. Right, you know, so if I'm looking, you know, if I'm looking through your resume, and I see contractor, contractor, contractor. I'm expecting you to move on, right? You know, if you're a full-time employee and you're switching jobs every six months, all right, so something, something's, something's a little bit weird, man. You're switching four hundred one k programs, like there's like no, no, no tomorrow, right? But if you're a contractor, I mean, I sort of expect you to be living out of a suitcase, right? You know, all right, right. so you're switching around. I, you know, that's that's just the way the nature of the beast. Right. And then how far back would you go with those projects that you've worked, let's say, for the past 15 years in the industry, but you've had 15 of those, or, or, or five of those years, the last five years, you've held, you've held 15 or 20 different positions. Gotcha. So the ladies, know, I think your, your resume is intended to be a complete picture of your work history. Okay, so the trick is all of them, right? But I think then the challenge comes, how much detail do you put for 15, 20 years of people? And probably what happens is you go down to line items for some of the older ones. So don't give me a description of what you did. Just tell me you did it, right? right. And maybe SQL programmer for IBM, or you know, something like that, just a one line item. And then we're good to go. And then give me more detail on what's Thank you. I, I appreciate that you're the world's number one COBOL programmer. Okay, congratulations, but uh, yeah, I just don't want to hear how you do this. Right. All right, so we have another. 
Now, the degrees are icing on the cake. She said, I'm very pleased. That it's lovely. It's great that you have all this. That's great. Put it at the end. She said, don't leave with it. And I know you're really proud of your accomplishment. Congratulations. But I'll be telling you what. Lockheed Martin is all I really care about on your damn resume. Right? So you're working for them right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That's it, buddy. Uh, by the way, the design project, move it. I would recommend personally, and these ladies know more than I do, so I'll have to defer to them. Move it down. Start with Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin has decided that you're employable, right? You may be a horrible, rotten, terrible person, but they, you passed whatever hurdle they had, and they said you were good enough to work for them, right? Well, if you're good enough to work for Lockheed Martin, then you're probably good enough to work for me, or you might be good enough to work for me. Got it? All that other stuff doesn't matter. Hey, do you have your degree? Yes. Boop. Guess what? I don't care about your degree. I really don't. <laughs> right? I care about the fact that Lockheed Martin hired you. That's the number one thing. You got the gist on that one? So that, I really think that that's your shining star. Well, I would recommend instead of starting with work experience to add, um, for Frank to add like a summary section and to highlight some of your key things. And you can highlight whatever is needed in a job description. So they say they need someone that, um, I don't know, for example, had some certain software skill or certain personality items or something like that or is involved in the community. These are places you can highlight that from the center. So I would put first a summary. Um, and you're, everyone here is going to hear a lot of advice on resumes. Do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. And you know, you have, it's a personal decision at the end of the day what you want to do and you don't do. And you can drive yourself crazy, change your resume a hundred times. And from our standpoint, we're still going to hire you and look at your resume as long as there's no mistakes and it's clean cut and it's easy to read. So don't get paranoid over, you know, take these with a grain of salt. If you want to change the education, move it down, great. If not, that's fine too, as long as there's not mistakes and it's still clean cut. So yeah, each resume is a unique um, reflection of you, this person. And so you don't want to look at all the resumes in the same format. And it's what works for you with your experience. And everyone's got their own personal preferences of what they like and don't like. So, you know, don't go crazy over that. And I think everyone offers great advice. And you should take a piece of what everyone says and then tailor it towards what works best for you and your personality and for what you're applying for. But you really just want to capitalize. Yeah, I would, I would capitalize. No grammar mistakes or stuff. And, then, so, and GPA is right, more important right, if you're a student getting your first job. Gotcha. Because, yeah, yeah. But, um, after that, it's basically what you've done. Yeah, so. so we have a question from the gentleman right there. So my comment was actually what, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. What, uh, yes, Karen? What Karen said. Uh, wouldn't that be more generational, say, a person who just graduated or is graduating Probably the education would make sense to go up front, whereas people who have already have graduated ten plus years or so, who cares about it? When in that more of a generational type thing? When you say yes and no, but if you have work experience, you want to put that first. Mm -hmm. And the education is a requirement, so we're not even going to look at the resume if you don't have the degree, because the degree is a requirement. <coughs> so we're looking now to see if you're one of the best fit for this job with your work experience. So um, like that would be more for a student still in school. Or I mean, I still think education would be at the bottom because we want to make sure you have the education. Now we want to see what, you, what you've done and how relevant your experience is to the job we're hiring, that particular job. Because when you come out of school, you're an idiot. Right, yeah, now we gotta like turn you into something useful, right? But if you already got useful, then all of a sudden you're much more desirable. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And behind you, so there was a question. Yes. Yes, yeah, so on the same theme there, where you made the statement earlier, and you're looking to see whether the resume matches your requirements. Let's focus on education. Degreed engineer, master's, PhD, and you have a PE. Should that not be at the front versus? down in the education where you're having to spend more than your 10 seconds to go find that, to see that you're a perfect match. Well, if you're a PE, chances are you would put it um, in your title. Well, yeah, after your name, yeah. but let's go for, you know, the other aspects that you wanted 15 years of experience. <laughs> well, that's why I'm asking. It, it depends because, okay, let's say I have seven resumes and now a master's degree is preferred well, that brings you higher up to the top. 
but the minimum requirements was a college degree, a bachelor's. So, I mean, even though you have a master's, that's, that gives you an extra notch. Yeah, I guess I was just asking, I understand we're listening. It's just within the scope of you as a person who's my front door that's reading it, where do you want to see it? Because it would seem logical if that's the, your, your deciding point as to whether you put it in the reject, maybe, oh, no, or no, yes no. pile. No, 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 and no, no matter where you put it, it's just well, no, no, I'm going to determine that. You're saying you're saying, spending 10 no, seconds no, no. on it. <laughs> no, I'm only going to put it in the yes, maybe, or no pile, depending upon the qualifications, not your resume. No, no, no. Like I say, the resume is just the information. I'm, if you have the education first and you're still um, qualified for the job, you're definitely going to go in the yes. No, it doesn't matter where you're going to post it. It's just, I think it looks better at the bottom because um, you want to see what you've done. We know you have the degree or you wouldn't apply for the job. We know well, you have the degree. So it's really, arguably, working experience is more important than Oh, I've always accepted that aspect, but I was just surprised to see them, you know, hearing that the four degrees and they don't understand. It's an emotional issue. Yeah, yeah. 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 is James with us tonight? James is in the back. Fantastic. So we'll take a look at James on Kevin's resume here. James does not appear to have any three-dimensional shading going on in his thing. So I'm right there, there's a little strike on that, but that's okay. We'll work sort of on that. So, so ladies, do you have a copy of James's? Yes, I, I do. And this was very similar to Audrey's. I actually made no comments on your resume because I thought it was great. Show off. Great, James. I, it's, 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 Although I would like to point something out. So both Audrey and our other gentleman had very good resumes, but we flagged them both on a misspelling and a capitalization issue. So if these excellent people had those tiny little flaws, I'll bet you everybody else's has at least one flaw in it. So no matter what, tonight your job is I don't know what your job is. Probably go home, take your resume, and give it to somebody else, because you sure as heck haven't found it, right? And say, in here, there's at least one error. Please find capitalization, punctuation, spelling, whatever. Okay, anyway. So we're talking about James's resume here. Now, James has his education up pretty far. Should he move it to the end? <laughs> well, I like he has the executive summary up at the top. I, I like that prior to the education. And you would read the executive summary. If you were evaluating for a particular job, you would actually read yes, that. I would. So you wouldn't just put the end. I would skim it. You'd yeah. skim it, right? Yeah, you know, yeah just, just it maybe, you know, highlight or underline certain keywords. That you were looking for as it matched the job description because it was all compact there in the executive summary. Or you can put a couple of sets of like little bullet points, you know, to make it stand out. Gotcha. So what else we got? I like that there's a lot of white space changes on here and then it's clean, it's, it's easy to read, and in my 15 seconds I can tell exactly what you do. Um, I can tell your job history. I see some, you know, other memberships and things that you're involved in. You could list. Um, are you expert at all of these programming skills, like MATLAB and all of these? Is that expert level? You might want to list like the level that you're at. Okay. Um, because someone, let's say it's a pro E position, um, and you're beginner level, you don't want someone to assume that you're expert level. So if some of these are like more experienced than others, and something possibly that you could include if it's applicable. I do have one question maybe about about that summary. And I was I did some reading in some spare time I had while I was looking for a new job. Um, and I saw sort of a, an argument having a, an executive summary where you you try to explain to the employer what you can bring to them as opposed to an objective, more of like what you are looking for in an employer. Um, and some articles that I had seen were sort of explaining that companies aren't interested by what you want anymore. They want yeah. what they want what makes them money. There you go. Um, and they, they were so they were looking more for what can you bring to them as a company. Yeah, I think after you get out of college an objective should be thrown out the window and you should start using the summary. Um, and exactly that. And it, it should be tailored for each job that you're applying for. So maybe you want to highlight again some key requirements traits or maybe if since business development is required, you've had business development experience, things that are some of those soft skills. But I agree, it's, it should show how you're qualified for the job. And some unique things about you, um, you know, you're really active and actively. I mean, that's something that can be measured too, and 
food in there. You know, just something that you want to highlight and make sure that the, the hiring manager definitely sees. Okay. Would, would you put um, Would you put like organizations that you were like ACI? Like, would you would you add that to your resume? Oh, definitely. Oh, you would. Yes. I think that's really important. Yes. That you're involved. Because that that's huge. I mean, sometimes hiring managers say to us, "It's not a written requirement," but that's great if they have some involvement in professional organizations. As soon as you have um, skills, you know, soft skills, you can learn uh, networking. Networking. Yeah. So a lot of times, not all the requirements are written down in a job description. They're just verbally told to people that are part of the hiring process. So you know, you don't want to make sure and only include the stuff that is said in the job description. You want to tell a complete picture of yourself. You know, I'm involved in the IEEE, so I see that we're changing some of these treasurer for a couple of these IEEE organizations. I know that he's actually stepped up and taken a leadership position. Okay, so he's not just a member, but he's actually part of the organization that's running it. And if I'm hiring him or if I'm looking to hire him, I'm looking at that and going, well, he's got a potential for management at some point in time. He's not just an engineer. Clearly, he's got at least some leadership potential, right? I mean, it's a little subtle. He's just saying he's treasurer for a couple of things. But, you know, that's, he's not just part of the nameless crowd. He's actually stepped up and can take up responsibility. So I'm like, hmm, there, there might be something a little Yeah, so you wouldn't just put memberships. You'd put it if they actually did something. Well, you, memberships is good. Membership Start with membership. And Where by the way... you put that in the resume? Just add a section for it. At the bottom? Or before yeah. education or after Somewhere. education? Somewhere yeah, organizations. It's, pre it's pretty much close to the bottom. Organizations? Yeah. Um, Associations or memberships? Professional organizations. Professional There's a lot of right. Yeah. Again, just include it. It doesn't really matter. It's not cool. So is there anything that James should change on his resume that comes to mind? James, one thing I had a question on is you put the mathematics instructor down below and it's out of order. Was that because it's non-engineering? Yes. I had, well, I've gone through a number of changes in trying to find an opportunity. I had it up in chronological order. Because then I'm looking at it and I see that then there's a gap on your resume, so I'm like, what were you doing for that year? Um, right. And I, I don't see that until later on. So me as a recruiter, I'm like, I want jobs, you know, progression. I want to see that. So you might want to think about, I don't know. I mean, again, there's so many ways to do it. I think it looks good, um, but it, it's going to depend on preference. You might also not need to put your co-op unless you're applying to a job that is more oriented to like a utility or right. something that you want to make sure included, but if it's not related to it. It depends, though. Is it worthwhile putting a description, with like a short couple sentences about what that company does? Something I added after I like a while. It. Yeah, I think it's good. Because, again, most people aren't going to realize what these organizations do. So I think we just have actually a very interesting thing happening here. So it becomes clear that Rachel's checking dates, right? So she's starting at the bottom. OK, so you start working here. I should be seeing something that accounts for every place that you've been. And she found on James is that there was a gap. Now, admittedly, she matched it up with something else. But it shows how Rachel goes through a resume. So if you think about your resume question, if you run through your dates, you know, is, is there going to be a gap? And if there's a gap, you probably should explain it. Because when Rachel's going through your resume, she, you know, it's a flag. It's just going to pop out at her. She's going to be like, I'm disconcerted by that. That might get you into one of the wrong piles. Because right? then she has to She's very angry, and if she discovers the game, it's just not going to go well. Hung, are you here this evening? Hung's right here. So we have Hung Man. So when we take a look at Hum's resume, is there anything that jumps in? Once again, Hum does not have three-dimensional boxes in his. OK, but we'll, we'll work with that. I can buy something like that. Anything that jumped out at you about Hum's resume? Or didn't jump out at you about Hum's resume, which would also be an also sort of key. First thing that jumped out at me is you may have a reason for this, just not putting your address and phone number, just your email address. Yeah, I can move the Oh, you just moved? Oh, okay, okay. Do you have a cell phone? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I think I you should put a city city. Yeah, I do it up. Why? Because you didn't trust me? No, come on, you know me. I guess it's you can all private on me. He's going to send it out to the world. What the hell is up with that? 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
for this job, and they got it. One year I had six people that happened to you, six engineers, because they came in second, or third even, and then another job came up because I thought they would be a very good fit for the company, but not this Someone was just had a better fit for that job, not that they weren't qualified. So, I mean, don't get frustrated. If you're really interested in the company, keep an eye out. The chances are the person, if you did well in the interview, they will remember you. And there's nothing wrong with checking that out with the recruiter either. So the, the takeaway that I took from that is what we were talking about is tailor your resume for the job, but don't over tailor it that you're hiding who you are and your true background. So make sure, in addition to including all about who you are and your general experience, you're also applying it to that particular job. So you don't, you don't know what else is going on, what else that company is looking for, what other people are looking for. So tailor your resume, but also don't hide the truth. That's right. kind of the takeaway, I think. Because sometimes if I knew a department, like say one of the power plants, I knew they were going to start with a project, and they don't even have the job supposed to get. And I might see something, and I email it to that manager, keep this one in mind. So do we have any suggestions for yeah, a problem? I, had a, a couple, I think it's good. I like the um, white space again, and then it's clean and clear cut. I noticed a couple of formatting issues. There's a couple different bullet points that you use, and this is more of a picky thing, but there's different. Like you see all those circles and there's triangles, and so I would just keep it consistent and use the same bullet points, because it's just kind of more of a stylistic thing when you're looking at it. Um, in addition, I noticed the license on the last page, the font was different. So I'm looking at it, and I'm going down to the last page, and I'm like, this, this looks a little different to me. So again, when I'm skimming it, it just it stands out to me, but I'm like, wait, why is this look a little bit different? It's like copy it in there. Which is OK. So just sometimes, you know, in addition to looking at grammar, spelling, you want to look at stylistic things to make sure that something doesn't stand out um, in a, a perspective that just makes you stand out, you know, not that it's in just a different manner. So that's always my recommendation. I also don't think you need an objective and a summary of qualifications. Um, I think you know you could probably get rid of your objective and just start with your summer of qualifications, and um, it would be very strong. And the reason I recommend that is, what if someone passed your resume on, as we we're just talking about, and it's not a design or a project engineer role, would you still be interested in it? And you don't want to narrow yourself so much that you wouldn't be then, you know, basically shooting yourself in the foot for any other types of jobs. So I would just recommend taking that out, starting with your summary of your qualifications, and then going into your experience. Excellent. Very good. So we've got two more resumes here. So uh, James here tonight. Yeah. Right up front. All right. Fantastic. First off, James, of course, has a love of the color blue. So that goes up very quickly. That's why. Okay. Uh, I'm a corporate marketing director, and he's making me make this boring. Okay. Which I'm on to do. I know. So there's no flip art. What I know. I printed it. I know. Come on. Come on. I just printed it. I didn't it. So. So, uh, ladies, when you took a look at this, was there anything that jumped out? Any initial gut reactions? Again, I thought it was clean cut. I like that, but I was having a hard time reading it. Um, yeah, that's a lot of that is, uh, has to do with the whole perception of trying to cram it off. So, I, I would, and yeah, I put I the comment I put two pages are okay. Yeah. That's what I put because I thought I was having a harder time following it because it was one page, and I feel like you have enough experience. You graduated in 2006. Um, if you graduated in 2012, I'd say you want to keep this on one page, but. Me personally, um, I was also thinking you'd probably take your internships off, and then you'd have a lot more space if you want to keep it on one page. Um, yeah, because so I was thinking of that because I just I thought it was good information, and I thought it was a little bit bigger. It would, it would be great. I think um, James is playing with the markets. Uh, yeah. I know that trick. Yeah. 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 Also, James, I noticed there was a summary. I would recommend starting with the summary section because um, I think that would just be good. If, if, you yeah. off, you know, if you took off the internship, you'd probably have room for it. My question is on the gap. You guys haven't mentioned the gap. There's a big gap. And how do you explain the gap? Okay, it's so 03. The answer wait. is we had a kid, so and one of us had to stay home. Okay. 
necessarily in the same sector you're in now and you're going for another your work history even though you have some and it's it's valuable where you were if you go somewhere else it's not necessarily mean doesn't necessarily mean anything to anybody else and i guess my point with that is just make your online presence the same message that your resume has that's my only point with that is the same message you're trying to convey with your resume if you have like a public linkedin profile to make sure it's also the same so i think that's okay it's okay to reinvent yourself and to market yourself a certain way in a resume but i think a lot of times forget that this is public, that anyone can just go and look at your LinkedIn profile. So, so be consistent. To that, how often do you use it? You use it all the time. And, and in other areas, there's like you absolutely have to, or you're going to miss out. Um, as far as offering that profile or having a profile. And on, on LinkedIn, having a, a social media presence and profile, is that something you would recommend everybody does? Yeah, I think if you're actually looking for a job, you should make sure you have one. I mean, I'm not going to disqualify. I'm sure people that don't have a LinkedIn profile. The whole point is if you do have one, just to be consistent. But if you're looking for a job actively, you can go to it all the time, and HR goes to that all the time as it is a need to find people. One of the tricks to LinkedIn is that your current status, you change it with the same looking for. Then when recruiters come to your profile, they understand that you're actively searching. And so they will reach out to you and say, hey, I've got something there. You're interested. If you don't say that, it can be unclear.
have conversations with people, you know, through groups and stuff. I don't think it's as important to be active or not active, you know. Cool. Uh, if you're out of a job. Oh, sure. Change. That's different. Yeah. If, of if you don't want your coworkers to you're make your in a job, job maybe just or all your stuff. supervisors that are fixed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Think about That's who you connect to. All right. All right, guys. We're getting. Oh, there's a question right there. Yes. What about references? Did you mention it in your resume? References. Oh, oh no, re references. Yes. No, I wouldn't put reference on a resume because when you fill out an application, they'll ask for references. No, I would. I would never put references on a resume. I would agree. Yeah. I, I just want. It. It's confidential information. I some say the people that are close to their personal information, and you don't know who's going to get that passed to. So yeah. Unless someone asks you for it. No, I would. Like because, like, say maybe you're going to interview with three people, and one of the interviewers knows one of those people, and you start getting off track talking about this one person, there might be some biases there. So you want to eliminate any kind of biases and have the same, you know, fair playing ground for every candidate. You just, everyone has biases, but you want to eliminate them as much as possible. The other thing is, is that they, if they are going to follow up on yours, and not your Recruitment will. I mean, HR will. Right. No, you want them the to have to come to you and ask you for your references because that gives you a chance to reach out to your references. Give you them a freaking call and say, hey, you know, your swap. best behavior because you're going to get a call. You're going to get a call about Say good things about me yes. and there's 20 bucks in it for you. Right? And please give yeah. references that yeah. will get yeah. a good yeah. reference. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important too that some of your past references are past supervisors. It's all too often all do reference checks and it's no one has been Supervisor, and that's a red flag to me of why is none of these right. guys they're just friends. Yeah. yeah. 